Hi everyone, welcome back to Z Physics. Today we are going to be solving the problems from the 2019 British Physics Olympiad Senior Challenge. These questions will also serve as a perfect practice for the A level multiple choice questions, although they can be a little bit harder. So let's have a go. The best way to work with this video would be to make sure that you pause this video now, attempt the questions independently, and then check with the solutions. So please pause the video now. Well, let's start having a go at these problems. For the first one, the mass of a car is approximately, well, I know that it's approximately a thousand kg a thousand kilograms which is going to be uh, leading us to the correct answer being b 10 to the power of three kilograms so that's a nice and easy start of the olympiad okay let's have a look at the next one planck's constant h is measured in units of joule seconds in the si system if it was measured in units of centimeter gram seconds instead of meters kg seconds by how much would its numerical value increase this is essentially a base units problem now a joule second is actually equal to a kilogram meter squared s to the power of minus two times second so that means that a joule second is actually a kilogram meter squared s to the power of minus one if you're wondering where i got this expression for the base unit of the joule just pick your favorite formula for energy for instance the kinetic energy formula is equal to a half mv squared the half has no units, so it means the units of that are going to be kilograms. Uh, the base unit for speed is ms to the power of minus 1. Then all we need to do is square it. Then we get kilograms meter squared s to the power of minus 2. So this is where this expression came from. Okay, well, if we were to convert all the kilograms to grams, that will give us a factor of 1000. So it's the same as multiplying by 10 to the power of 3. And additionally, if we were to convert the um, meters to centimeters, we're going to get a factor of 10 to the power of 2 squared. Now, overall, this will give us 10 to the power of 3 times 10 to the power of 4 because the 10 to the power of 2 is squared which overall will um, give us 10 to the power of 7 leading us to the correct answer being a a okay, question three a large boulder of mass m lies in a riverbed it can be rolled over by the water in the river flowing over it at speed v which of the following equations could relate the mass of the boulder to the speed of the river its density in the gravitational field strength k is a constant with no units well the um the way we are going to solve this problem is via dimensional analysis so in every physics and maths equation the units on the left have got to equal the units on the right. Luckily for us, the units on the left are quite simple, so um, they are kilograms. So the product of all the base units on the right will have to equal a kilogram in order for this to be correct. For instance, let's have a go at the first answer here, which is A k has no units in this case so density is going to have units of kilograms meters to the power of minus three because it's kilograms per cubic meter 
velocity is going to have units of ms to a power of minus one and gravitational acceleration g that's going to have units of ms to a power of minus two now um, i cannot cancel enough to just get kilograms so it's not going to be a okay so b let's uh, let's have a look at b so k has no units uh, the units of density are kilograms per cubic meter like so v squared is going to give us m s to the power of minus one which is all squared so it's going to be m squared s to the power of minus two and we're going to divide that by g to the power of three which is m s to the power of minus 2 cubed. So that's going to give us m cubed at the bottom, but at the top we have m minus 3 times n to the power of 2, so that's m power of minus 1. So they're not going to fully cancel out just to give us the kilogram, so it's not going to be b. For c, once again, we have uh, k which is unitless and then we have density which is measured in kilograms m to power of minus three then we have v to the power of six so this will be m to the power of six s to the power of minus six like so then we're going to be dividing that by the units of acceleration raised to a power of 3. So that's going to be meters s to a power of minus 2 raised to the power of 3. Maybe just over here on the side I'm going to uh, just simplify this and show you guys that this will actually cancel out. So uh, leaving us just the kilogram. So it's going to give us a kilogram. M to the power of minus 3 times M to the power of 6 will give us M to the power of 3. Then I'm going to have S to the power of minus 6. And once I expand these brackets, I'm going to get m to the power of 3, s to the power of minus 2 times 3, which is going to give me minus 6. Well, the m to the power of 3 gets cancelled out. Additionally, the s to the power of, ooh, what's happened here? Let's zoom in. The uh, s to the power of minus 6 will also cancel out, which will just leave us with a kilogram so the whole of this expression on the right hand side is will actually have units of kilograms and the whole of the expression on the left hand side will also be measured in kilograms so c has to be the correct answer because it is dimensionally correct Okay, question four. Let's estimate the number of molecules in a teaspoon full of sugar. Now, we know that one mole of a substance contains approximately an Avogadro's number of particles, or exactly an Avogadro's number of particles, which uh, normally given the symbol Na, and that's equal to 6.0 times 10 to the power of 23. So a teaspoonful of sugar is not going to contain significantly more. It will also not contain significantly less than that number. So I'm going to go for C, 10 to the power of 23 for my estimate. And finally, question five, you knock a plate of food off the table. Yeah, that never happens to me. And observe that it lands upside down. This might be due to A, the weight of the food on top of the plate makes it turn over. This will definitely not be the reason because the weight acts straight downwards. So the weight will not exhibit a turning moment. B, the air drag on the plate makes it turn over. Uh, that's not going to be the case, especially unless there's some crazy wind going on, because the drag will oppose the motion, which will be directly upwards. So it's not going to be this. C, when you push the plate, you provide a spinning 
motion to it. Now this will definitely depend on the way you actually push the plate. However, in general you're going to push this directly to the side. So that's not going to be uh, the case uh, because if you provide a horizontal force this will once again not create a turning moment. Finally D as it slides off the edge of the table there's a turning force applied by gravity. Well this is actually true because as the uh, as it's sliding like so gravity is acting straight downwards. So in this case the uh, correct answer is D. The uh, force of gravitation will provide a turning moment but only as it slides off the edge of the table. Okay folks, so hopefully this was useful. Let me know if you'd like to see more Physics Olympiad videos. Uh, remember these are not official solutions and uh, if you would like to have a look at the actual Senior Physics Olympiad challenge, I have provided a link in the description. Thank you very much for watching.